Here we go. Good morning, all, everybody. It's good to see you. Uh, I uh, wanted to start, before I start my presentation and get in your light, that um, I'm buying a new house. Well, new to me. Uh, Dottie and I are moving, uh, hopefully, in 30 days or so. But it, it's very stressful at 86. It's stressful at any age, but at 86, it's stressful. So we're going to be sort of uh, packing and moving and all the good stuff that you have to do. So I may not have another one of these coming out next Wednesday, or I may. Uh, but I just want to let you on the YouTube channel know. Now, everybody here is, I'm in Twyla's class at Sierra College, plant-based living. And she asked me, she's a good friend, and you've seen her on my, uh, my YouTube channel. There's a whole bunch of us on there. And I still get people commenting on that. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Well, oh, Dottie's here. Dottie's the wife. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted uh, to everybody to know that I'm at her class. She asked me to speak. And you've, you guys on YouTube have seen this before, but watch it again. If not, turn it off. I don't care. All right. It, for everybody here, this is, it's never too late to go plant-based. Actually, that was the, uh, the uh, title of a class you had at Sac State. And stole it. I stole it. <laughs> I have no creativity at all. So I stole it. And this is basically a short version of my journey eating a whole food, plant based diet, and how it changed and saved my life. Never mind improved, it saved it. When I had this, I essentially, I'm going to sit down. I, I essentially had months. To, oh, that was good. I had essentially had months to live, not years. So I retired, I was 80 years old. Oh, let me, no, let me back. I moved up to El Dorado Hills. I retired, and as most retired people do, you want to have health, energy, fun, vitality. Well, if you don't have the health, you don't get fun, energy, and vitality. You're pretty much in a wheelchair. You'll notice I'm sitting down. But so you that's what you look forward to but in my case after a couple of years this is what i saw a lot of the emergency room in 2015 the first six months i went six times to the emergency room they gave me frequent mileage they come into my house oh al, i've been here before yeah. oh al how are you it was not a pleasant time in my life so they diagnosed me at 80 years old with end stage coronary artery disease. And the key there is end stage. That means you're on your way out, good person. So I was not very happy. That was very depressing. But it didn't just happen at 80 years old. It, you build this up. Uh, when I was in 1985, when I was 48, I had. Uh, five vessel cabbage, they call it, or that's bypass surgery. Okay, that was the most traumatic experience in my life. It was like they put me in a big gunny sack, all my ex wives came over and just beat the daylights out of me, and then they threw me down the stairs. It was just horrible. So I thought, I never want to go through that again. But I wasn't as sharp as I am now. But I knew a little bit, so I took the pledge, no red meat. It wasn't quite good enough. I wish I'd have taken the pledge, you know, no meat at all, but I no red meat, thinking like a lot of people do, oh, fish is healthy. No, it's not. Chicken is all right. No, it's not. Pork is the white meat, so it's got to be good. I don't think so. And, but I had enough sense at the time to know that fat wasn't good for you. And at the time, and people today still eat, 35 to 45 percent of their of fat in their caloric intake that's a lot so i thought i can do better than that so i said i'm going to see if i can do 20 percent. so that was my goal and actually i was pretty good at it not perfect nobody's perfect but i was pretty good uh, and i think that got me to 80. and i moved up here to el dorado hills and i took up bicycling. Bicycling is good. It's a lot of fun. I was along the American River bike trail. And 
I started to have backaches. Uh, Dottie and I were, we were in a club uh, that serves seniors in retirement and we had couples biking. So, uh, you know, I was, I was five miles out and I started to have backaches and chest pains. I, you know, and with my history, that wasn't good. So I, I bicycled back <laughs> through the bike in the back of the truck. Dottie says, you want me to drive? No, I'm fine. Well, it, the pain never went away. So we find, I go to the hospital and sure enough, I've had a heart attack. Uh, and it was sort of a, no, that was in 1999. So they put me on whatever they do. And they were sort of amazed that I had lived <laughs> from um, when I, uh, in 1985, because most people don't live that long. So I thought, okay, so it must have been the, tw the diet, the di minimum diet that I was on. So that was good. But is there anything I can do to improve? I don't want to have this happen again. I, you know, how many heart attacks can you have? I found out. But so uh, they said, should I do anything? No, no, we don't have any record. You're just fine. We're amazed to live this long. So in 2005, again, I was, we were supposed, to, our daughter was adopting a baby. And so I was supposed to be here for that. And instead of uh, being there for her, I was in the hospital. Um, and then uh, they, was that the time I had the final stint? No, yeah, they put the first stint. I'm sorry, back, back up. They put the first stint in. And when they did that, they just put it in. They, they put it in through your groin, up through your heart. It expands. And that's it. They take the thing out. And the next day you get up and all the nurses come and look at your groin. And they say, that's no big deal. I'm not sure I wanted to hear that. But... <laughs> It's no big deal. And I thought, would I have gone on this lifestyle if, the first, if I'd had a stint the first time instead of being cut open and, you know, have all this pain? So I just thought about that a little bit. Um, so that was no big deal. And then in 2013, I, I started, the pain started. It, basically, the stint treats the symptom. That's all it does. It, it, sometimes the pain goes away, sometimes it doesn't. But the pain did go away, but I didn't change anything. It came back. What a surprise. So I had the second pain, no relief of pain. So oh, I don't know what to do now. Uh, but I was taking uh, Imdor and Renexa. Imdor is a drug that opens up your blood vessel. Again, it's only treating the symptoms as does Renexa. Imdor is time-release nitro. That's what it is, and that opens your blood vessels. But the disadvantage is you get dizzy. You can't stand up quick. I, <laughs> I was fall, walking around the house falling down. I hadn't even had anything to drink. So in 2016, they put the last, well, it wasn't the last, unfortunately. They put a stint in, and it didn't help at all. Uh, I mean, it, and they said, there's nothing we can do for you, Al. They said, I couldn't go up downstairs. I couldn't do anything. They said, you have all these stints in, and the problem now is your little uh, blood vessels throughout your heart, they're all clogged. And we can't get, you know, we, we don't have stints that small. They don't have the capability. Well, that was not for, <laughs> that was very, very depressing. I... Didn't quite know what to do with myself. I had to put stair lifts in my house. I live in a tri-level house. They tried to level is why I call it. And that's why I said earlier that I'm moving because I'm mo we're buying a single story house. It's smaller, we're downsizing, but it, it's all on one floor. Uh, but I had to put, I had to live in this house. Which we both didn't want to move. Dottie didn't want to move. So it was cheaper to put stair lifts in the house than it was to, to move. And the, the picture on the right is the stair lift. As I said, it's tri-level. So I had to go from the garage to the house. And there's, I think, seven stairs there. And I left that in. I took the other ones out. I left that one in because at my age group, I still have friends that couldn't. We, whether or not they're dying off, unfortunately, we still have friends that can't climb stairs. So I left that in. I had to cancel trips. I had booked a trip. You have to book a year in advance to go fishing in Alaska. And you fly into Fairbanks. 
you take a two and a half hour puddle jumper, you know, a bush plane that's got pontoons on it. They land in the fishing lodge. I don't eat fish now. So I'm going, well, why am I doing this? Uh, or no, I did eat fish then. I didn't know by this time. This was before I well, was still a carnivore. So you fly into the fishing lodge and then you stay there for a week or 10 days and then you come back. So I'm thinking, um, you know, if I'm at the lodge and I have a problem, it's two and a half hours to the plane to fly in and two and a half to go out. So that's five hours I'm in a fishing lodge. I think I'll cancel that trip. So we canceled that trip. Um, come on, am I pressing the wrong button? I am. All right, sorry guys. That's what happens when you get old. Okay, and then this was a, one of the highlights of my life was to go to the desert with my buddies and go four by four and just go around, look at mines and uh, look at old railroad sites, ghost towns, get yourself dirty and break things and have fun. This is what I do. So we went to Carson City. Carson City is at 4,700 feet altitude. And, and so we go up there and I take my little trailer. It's not much bigger than that one. And we get to the campsite and I can't walk to the office to sign in. So my buddy goes and signs in. And so we, I rest for a while and he said, all right, we're two guys in a strange town without our wives. What do we do? We go to a hardware store. That's what guys do. So we go to Big Lowe's up there. And I don't know why we went, just because that's what we do. So he's at one end, I'm at the other end, and we're looking at the bicep. We meet in the middle, and he looks at me and says, oh, my God, Al, you look like death warmed over. Well, that was not reassuring. But he takes the car keys away from me, hooks the trailer up, and he drives the two hours back to, to where we live. And so this was really a hard moment for both of us, because we'd been doing this for 11 years. And so I thought, oh, I'm never going to do this again. And then Dottie wanted to go to Paris. She was diagnosed with liver cancer. And that's a, her, her story actually is more inspiring than mine, but her, she has a good story. So we had liver cancer, so she says, uh, honey, can we go to Paris? Well, you can't say no to your wife over that. So of course we're gonna go to Paris. And of course we had booked this uh, a while in advance. So we get to Paris and uh, a lifetime trip. And it was a river cruise. We're going down the river, starting at Paris. So we book an extra two or three days in Paris before we go for a walk in the city. I'm going, walk? Well, I go real slow. And um, they say, uh, we're going to have a tour of the underground, the metro, whatever they call it. I say, okay. And she says, don't worry. They have escalators when you have to change from one level to the other. They have escalators. Don't worry. I said, all right. And there was two groups. They were the healthy, normal group, and then us, the cripples. So I said, all right, I'll go with the cripples. And so we go there, and we get on, and everything goes fine. We get on the metro, and we drive. It takes us around, and we have to stop and go up to the next level. The escalator's broken. And I think, oh, my God. So the, even the cripples can go faster than I can. And I'm really stressed out because I don't know my way around Paris. I have to keep up with them. But wait, guys, you know, it's, it's barely beaten in there. And I've got angina. I said, huh. Oh. So uh, I had to see a doctor. And the doctor says, you can't fly. They wanted to put me in the hospital. And I wouldn't hear it. Say, go talk to doctor. He said, your husband will die if he goes home. Uh, I went home. I didn't die, obviously. And that was the, we had a nice weekend in Paris rather than a 10 day river cruise. How old are you at about this point? 80. 80. Uh, no, I might have been a little bit younger, 79 maybe. <laughs> well, that's a little bit younger. Um, then we, I had a grandniece's wedding in. Milwaukee, and I was close to my my niece and her grandchildren, and her children and her grandchildren, and so they had they had they was going to speak at the wedding, and it was really a big deal. But I thought I can't fly, I can't go back there if I'm in, up at uh, twenty thousand feet, and I have a heart problem. What am I, they're not going to land the plane. I think they would have, but I didn't. I assumed they wouldn't. 
So I thought I had to cancel that, uh, much to my disappointment. And then another, nope, sorry, what did we miss one here? Well, there's another wedding. I thought it would be there. Nope, it isn't there. Okay, there was another wedding that I had to cancel in Los Angeles. And that's, not, that's only, you know, 400 miles. But I was housebound, basically. I was terrified to go. I thought, well, I don't know where the hospitals are between here and L.A. And I don't even know where they are in L.A. And I said, no, we'll pass on that one. So after the last stint that they put in, they said, well, would you like to come to cardiac rehab? What's cardiac rehab? Well, they will, re will rehab you from your, your stints. So I said, okay, you throw a drowning man anything and he'll grab at it. So I thought, okay, I'll go do that. And the first half, half was in a room twice the size of this room. And Dottie takes me there and I, I sort of go in like this and sit down and she says, all right, now the first half is on exercise. Exercise? I can hardly walk. You want me to do exercise? I'm to myself. You want me to do exercise? Yes, it's important that you get your heart rate up. I thought, get it up. I just want to keep it going. So that was just depressed. That was it. I was in the bottom of the wheel rut. I was just depressed. The next half, however, was on diet. Well, I, in 1985, I had changed my diet. Now, here's something that I can control. So I thought, okay, I'll pay attention, <laughs> and it helped me a little bit. So this fat lady comes out, and she says, I'm here to tell you about a whole food plant-based diet. And I thought, you're here to tell us? Uh, bury me now. It's not, I'm going to die. She says, but I'm not on the diet. I'm just going to suggest it. And I thought, well, why don't they send somebody out that's been on the diet? But they didn't. So... Here's what's, here is the image that saved my life. It's in the book that saved my life. And this one shows a individual. Actually, if you read the book, it, it's a doctor that was a friend of Dr. Eshelston, and he had an occlusion right in this artery, which I don't know the name of. But it wasn't operable, and they couldn't put a stint in there. I have no idea. I don't know the technical reasons, but it's in the book. And here's what saved, gave me hope, inspired me. If you look, it's November to, tw uh, to July. It was 32 months, not 30, 36 months. Because to be honest with you, I wasn't sure I could live three years. But 32, I thought there was a chance for that. So, and if you'll notice here, this is 32 months later, you'll notice that the occlusion has gone away and look here, looky, 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 look at all the extra blood flow. And that's, I think that's called corollary arteries. Uh, I think that's the word. And the, the arteries grow around and that's what's happened to me. I only, I, most normal people have three blood vessels in their heart. I only have one. The other two have included because remember I had five, uh, 1985. So I only have one in there, but I have a lot of those other things that go around. So uh, that gave me some hope. And here are the, the book that saved my life. And he, they recommended three. They didn't give them to me. They just recommended. I don't care. I went out and bought them. Prevent and reverse heart disease by, T, uh, by uh, Caldwell Eshelson, M.D. In that book, he talks about people like me that were cardiac cripples. He takes them and he got, he was in the Cleveland Clinic in Ohio and he got 24 cardiac cripples that were literally on their last legs, like I was, which is why it spoke to me. And he said, if you, I'm going to give you a diet, I'm going to give you a program. He nurtured them, he counseled them and said, if you stay on this diet, you will feel better. 24. People being people, six of them said, I'd rather eat cardboard. I can't take this diet. And within a couple, six months or so, they all passed away. They all assumed room temperature. So it didn't work for them. But those remaining 18 
stayed alive for at least 20 years, and I think they, they stay, they're still alive 30 years later. I mean, that book is not a current book, so it works for not just me. And for critics, he replicated that study, again, with 200 people. So, you know, his book, I credit him, and I've talked to him, and I credit him for saving my life. He didn't know he was doing it, but that's all right. The next book was How Not to Die. Don't you love that title, How Not to Die? Let me tell you, when they can figure that out, I'll volunteer. But it's by Dr. Greger, and in the first page of the book, very first page, he talks about why he went into medicine. He went into medicine because his grandmother, at the time, was 65 years old. Now, I was 80, 65 as a young chick. So he's 80 years old, she's 80 years old, and they send her home in a wheelchair and, and basically get your fares in order because there's nothing we can do for you. And he and she didn't sort of believe him, uh, believe them. So she got her way to California and went into Pritikin Institute. And the main thing that the Pritikin Institute is based upon is whole food, plant-based eating. And so in three weeks, she was walking 10 miles. And I thought, boy, did that inspire me. Now, I have to tell you, it took me four weeks because I'm a little slow, but that's all right. She got it done in three weeks. And the last book that uh, was recommended, which I bought, is The China Study by T. Colin Campbell and his, and his son. The China Study was uh, inspired created, helped by Cho Enlai, who was the premier of China at the time, was dying of cancer. So he wanted to, I guess, in a humanitarian gesture, he wanted to see if he could help people, his, his, his you know, people, his, his legacy, thank you, legacy. Uh, so he got, went to came to the United States and got permission to use T. Colin Campbell to run this, because T. Colin Campbell has a PhD in nutrition. And he's a very bright, very smart guy. And he, he Campbell came over, they got 6,000 assistants to help him run the study. So they, they tried to canvas everybody in China and they found out a whole lot of stuff. And it's well, it's a somebody was saying they started to read it and it's a tough read, and it is. I have a background in science. As an aside, I trained the, uh, the two monkeys that were sent in space, the first two. I trained one of them because I was chosen that because of my background. So the book spoke to me, but it's a tough read. But he, they found several things out, is that the people that had less than 10% of fat in their diet, which was really easy for people in China because they don't have that much uh, rich foods like we do. They didn't have the normal aging uh, chronic diseases like diabetes, heart disease, cancer, etc., etc., because the human body has an incredible ability to heal itself. So they, it's just, it was very eye-opening. And they had some interesting things about cancer too. They found a high, press, pre, uh, high amount of cancer in the better educated and wealthier children because they drink a lot of milk. So that's an aside, but all right. So let's go to Dr. Eshelston's diet. And this is right from the book. You may not eat anything with a mother or a face. This is not me being smart ass. Any, no meat, poultry, or fish. You may not eat any dairy products. Well, dairy products are basically eggs and, and cheese, and yeah, that's just another meat product. Come on. You must not consume oil of any kind, honey, no oil. <laughs> uh, uh, not a drop. The only oil you should buy is the oil for your car. That's mine. Um, you cannot eat nuts or avocados. Again, they're full of fat. They're, they're caloric density, and so they have a lot of fat in them. You want to not eat much fat. In fact, no sugar. The body turns sugar to fat, so you want to avoid that. No sugar. And you want to stay low fat. 
you want to have the fat content should be between 9 and 11 percent. So let's round that off to 10. So people say, well, Al, how do you not eat fat? Not how, how do you keep your fat intake down? I don't read labels. I don't pay much attention to my, what I eat. Uh, I mean, I eat what's healthy, but I don't pay much attention to the, the amount that I eat. It's by you do that by not eating processed, where is it? There we go, avoid processed food. Does that come up? Yeah, they can't read that on that one, interesting. You avoid processed food. If you look at the label on processed food, you can hardly find anything that doesn't have a lot of fat in it and a lot of salt in it and a lot of sugar in it because that's what our taste buds respond to. All right, the results. Now, this is after four weeks on the diet. I took Dottie and my friend that I had gone to um, uh, 5,700 square feet. Um, where, where was I? On every desert I know. No, no. Where, the, the, town, the town I mentioned before, we went to the hardware store. Um, Carson City. Carson City. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I went to Carson City, and we went up there. And uh, Tahoe is, it's, as we know, 6,000 feet. Okay, so we go up there. I eat at Jake's on the, on the lake, which is a nice place. I bring my own salad dressing, balsamic vinegar, and... Uh, I put that on it, and I had a nice lunch up there, and I'm feeling good. So everybody else says, well, why don't we go for a walk around the lake? All right, I'll try it. Pardon? Not around. All right, but, you know, near the, <laughs> partially around. There's a, we're all critics. We're all critics. So I say, all right, so I, I thought, I'll try it out. So I go down two flights of stairs to the lake. I, we walk a mile and a half. I feel great. No chest pains, no nothing. And this is the first time since I started this. Four, it was four weeks. I never did anything before. And I did it without any trouble. So we get back to the stairs. My car's parked up two flights of stairs. Do you think I can do that? I don't know. Let's try it. Right up. Fantastic. So this is me in the city of light. And I should be the happiest time of the light. I was not happy, puppy. This is me. Uh, at uh, Zest uh, over in, uh, here in Roseville. And I was just having a ball. Um, oh, that's a fake one. Uh, now I don't have angina. I, I can walk up uh, stairs, climb stairs. It's great. Uh, I'm at, I bike now. I'm on a bike club. Uh, it's an e-bike, but that's all right. You still get exercise. So I can do 15, 20 miles on an, pedaling on an e-bike. I do on the lowest uh, assist level, and I have a three-wheeler just because if you ride a two-wheel bike you, for an hour, two hours, you have when you get back, you have to surgically remove it from your seat. You know, I mean, it's just uncomfortable. So I like comfort. So my buddies all have two-wheelers. I thought, well, I can show you. I can ride in two-wheel bikes. So, I, <laughs> all right. And then uh, my cholesterol in Three months, okay, went from two, one, 252 to 150 in two months. And then it went down. It's now 115. It went down to 118, and it's just stayed down there. I don't, you know, again, it's just from um, uh, eating the whole food. It's all in the food. Come on, there we go. I lost 30 pounds in two, uh, three months. That's 10 pounds a month. I actually lost it too fast. I didn't, I just, I was so terrified. I was so afraid of, of not eating the wrong thing, of going back to the way I was, that I just, I eat mo lots of salads, and I didn't eat enough starch. And so I learned that from McDougal when I went, somebody asked me about the McDougal 10-day course, and he pushes starch, and starch satiates you, so you feel hungry. but. Anyway, I lost it. I, sh I shouldn't have lost it quite that fast. But I now weigh, yeah, 137 this morning. Uh, and I've been that way for a couple of years now. Uh, this is what would have killed me if the heart problem hadn't. My kidney functions were from 40%. I'd go to see the doctor and he'd say, oh, well. And he sent Dottie and I to an all-day or half-day class where she had said, don't put, don't cook this, don't that, eat that, don't do this. 
and it's not reversible. You can't change it. That's what they told us. And uh, at 40 percent, they said, you know, you, it, all you can do is slow it down. And then eventually you're going to have to go on uh, dialysis. And I we've lost a couple of or a friend that was on dialysis. And it's not a, a it is not a pleasant way to go. Uh, so I have a good friend. Uh, well, I don't have that slide. Son of a gun. I have a good friend that is a, a nephrology nurse. She a P, has a PhD in nephrology. And uh, she said, Al, uh, my, uh, can I have your medical records? To get her PhD, she had to make a presentation. She said, can I um, use you <laughs> as an, uh, an example? Of course you can. Can I get your medical? Of course you can. So I gave her permission. She got my medical record. She made up a half hour presentation and, and I was on that. And she, I thought I had that slide on this one, but I don't. She wrote me an email and said, Al, most people lose 1% uh, a year of their kidney function. And she said, you gained back 27%. She said, you gained 27 years. Well, that isn't quite true, but that was nice of her to say that. Um, okay, and these, I don't get ugly looking bruises on my hands anymore. I still get bruises, but it, it's real easy to have dark spots. I still had them for 11 months on, do I have it on this slide? On my foot. I had it just built up over the years and it would just be down here. And the doctors have some name for it. You know, if they can't cure something, they name it. So I forget what they called it, but it went away on its own after 11 months. Uh, so it had to do with my circulation. It had to do with my heart function. Um, yeah, this is a lot of this, this stuff gets, some of this stuff is minor. I just throw it in. Um, my left foot, because when I had the bypass surgery, they strip a vein out of your leg. So the, the blood can't get back as quick as it can in your other leg that hadn't had the vein strip. And so it was swollen, not badly, but it was puffed out. And it, that way until it probably went away, after two or three years, it went away. Um, my, P, nobody here cares about it, but I'm going to tell you anyway. My PSA went from 7 to 3.5. I was at McDougal's, and uh, at 75, Kaiser, you're going to die from something else. Don't worry about it, you know. But uh, when I was 70, they still, they, I don't know if they cared, but they, st they let me, they tested me, and they was, it had gone up to seven. It had always been low, or the threes. And they said, ah, don't worry about it. Well, I did worry. And so I was at McDougal's 11 months after I'd been on this lifestyle. And I said, uh, they, they test your blood when you come in, and McDougal does, on a 10-day program. They test it when you come in, they test it halfway through, and they test it at the end. So at the very end, I said, would you test me for PSA? Well, we don't do that. I said, I don't care. I want to know what it is. I'll pay you, you know, whatever it costs, I'll pay you. Would you, would you test it, please? Uh, okay, we'll do it. So they did, and it was at 3.6. So I thought, okay, that improved also. The number of pills I've taken, went, they went down from 20 just to 8. And I wasn't taking any, really, any heart medicine. I, was, I still had acid reflux, which um, that went away about 80% of it. But I had so abused my body. It, 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 and it's getting better, but I, I really had abused it. So unfortunately, when you're in your 80s and you have a history of coronary artery disease, and you get near an MD, the pills just are magnetically, they just have to write you a prescription. Um, I have an increase in my mental acuity. Now, I, people say, well, how do you know? How, you can't test that. I know I do, because Dottie has always said I'm an ass. Now she thinks I'm a smart ass. <laughs> Gee, you're not going to laugh at that, are you? <laughs> All right. Um, First time I've given this presentation in front of her. <laughs> All right, so uh, I do have much more energy. This is me at my 76th, I want to say, or 75th birthday uh, party. And uh, so I have, do have a lot of more energy. And on my, way, on my YouTube channel, there's, uh, I do a series of 27 people so far I have interviewed. 
uh, and th just ordinary people that come to our, our Wednesday group and uh, I say, you know, how long have you been? I only ask them four questions. How long have you been on the diet uh, or lifestyle? What have, benefits have you seen? And uh, what caused you to go on it? And is there any recommendation? It's only four questions I ask. Every single one of them has said, oh, man, I, have so, I feel so much better. I have more energy. And it's just one of the benefits of this. And it's also one of the reasons that this lifestyle has a very, very high success rate. Who doesn't want to feel good? So the people don't go off it very easy. It happens. All right. Now, this is 87. Now, this was last year's slide presentation. This is amazing. It's not that I'm young. It's not that I have the agility I did when I was in my 60s, which is young to me. But I don't have aches and pains. I, I wake up in the morning and I do uh, five minutes of stretching exercise and I don't have aches and pains. Uh, it's just, you don't have them. It's amazing. I, and muscles don't ache, the whole thing. I, I, you know, it's, uh, that to me is why I would never go off it. And the biggest one at all, I saved to last. When you're in your late 80s and sometimes earlier, you worry about meeting your maker. You worry, particularly when you have a heart disease, you worry that you're going to have the big one. You worry that something's going to happen and you're going to feel the elephant on your chest and they're going to wheel you off to the hospital and wave goodbye to your friends and family and you're never going to come out. So I just haven't had that worry for the last seven years. And that is just such a peace of mind. It, it, it is, you can't put a value on that. You don't have that, like that picture. You don't have the rock over your head. So, uh, this is, uh, I, I'm going to skip through this. In January 7th, I, I, this was, I'd been on the diet for just a year. And my cardiologist, well, I haven't seen you for a while. Why don't you come in? All right. She asked me if I had any angina anymore. No. She said, do you have any other chest pains? No. She asked if I was still taking Imdor. No. Are you still taking Renexa? No. She asked if I was still feeling dizzy because I had complained of that. No. She asked if I was still feeling weakness. No. And she then said, uh, and then I told her, I said, I climbed all four flights of stairs to come to your office. I didn't take the escalator. And she says, oh, would you mind sharing that with a group of people? And I said, no, I wouldn't mind it at all. But I, I, I don't. I never did this in my life until I started, thank you, Twyla, uh, in her class. And she let me ramble like I'm doing now. And I got more comfortable doing it. And uh, I never did that before. So the first time we do uh, her, she got a group of people for, and it was 100. I thought, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And I sort of blew it, but here I am. Now, what have I learned? I have learned that the body has an incredible ability. A cr I don't learn to talk. I learned that my, your body has an incredible ability to heal itself if you will just let it. And you let it by not putting objects into it that it wasn't designed for it, like meat, oil, uh, meat and uh, salt, oil, and sugar. It's that simple. It's hard to, it's hard to do that. All right. You, also, I learned the hard way is you can't care more about someone else's health than they do. I have my, all my children and friends. I have this knowledge. I have this experience. And it doesn't matter. They don't, they don't want to learn. They, so you can't teach them. You just have to smile and say, go move on. This is the important one to, to you and everybody in this room. You must surround yourself with like-minded, whole food, plant-based people, which is why Twyla and I and the several other people started the Wednesday group at Vegan Plate. Uh, we started another one at El Papagayo, and it, uh, I will pass out cards to anybody that has uh, talks about it. I give you my card. And that is so important because they understand your journey. Now, everybody's journey is different. Mine is weird, but it, that's mine. And I did it my way. 
uh, and you talk to uh, 10 other people and they did it 10 other ways. And no, but there's no right way, there's no competition, just do it is uh, what Nike says. And here's the other thing, this gets my wife mad a bit. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. So you have to care. And I met a gal today, name was Peggy. And just, she had seen, uh, she had uh, seen me at the, uh, the conference and she came over and introduced herself because uh, somebody had mentioned uh, the vegan plate on Wednesday. So she came, oh, I saw your talk. Okay, very good. She said, I have coronary problems. I have heart problems. I said, oh, I want to talk to you. And so we started talking and um, she said, well, it's hard. And I said, she said, I'm trying. I said, if you're trying, you're dying, you know, and, and uh, she said, well, you know, she didn't want to hear that. But she says, the problem is socially. I can't go with my, can't see my friends. I can't go out to dinner. It's all social. And I told her this statement, you have to care more about your own health than other people's feelings. I mean, that's just true. And this is the one, I think you mentioned it. It's not how long you live, it's how well you live. And uh, Gold, Dr. Goldhammer didn't mention this, but he tells this story, and it's a wonderful story. He said, you want to live a long life, and you want a good life, a healthy life, and you want to have a good death. He says, for instance, he had a doctor, was a friend, was 102 years old, and he was out playing golf with all of his friends. And he was out, they were out at the tee and they were playing and they were talking and there was three or four of them standing around and he said, you know, I don't feel so good. And he dropped dead. And he said, that was the perfect life. He lived 102 years, he was healthy, productive for 102 years, and then 15 seconds, he died. And I thought, that's good. Mo the average American spends 17 years in, with some sort of a uh, disability, some sort of a problem, some even worse. You know, they get they get incontinent, they get uh, in wheelchairs, and it's you know, 15 minutes, 15 seconds. I'll take that one. Thank you. So the the, the theory is, it's never too late to go plant based. If you can do it, I can do it. I don't. I'm just an old fart. I don't have any special talents. I don't have any special willpower. I have very little willpower. But I can make a decision, I know how to do that, and I know how to follow instructions. And that's all it takes to do this. All right, this is a concept now called cognitive dissonance. And what that means is that you're now exposed to something that goes totally against everything you've always known and always thought to be true. This can't be true. This only applies to you, Al. This can't be right. So you're all in, not you all, but this tends to trigger cognitive dissonance. All right, let me show you. Uh, there it is. Cognitive dissonance is when one person perceives information that is contrary to all the beliefs and evidence that they've held for their whole life. So let me show you some friends of mine. This is Don and Ruby. And this is uh, like I said about um, Dr. Um, Lyle, this, I th well, you were there for it, weren't you? Yeah, you were there, and I forget, Peggy, our friend Peggy, put this on for Don and another couple, Don and Ruby. They both were 80 years old. They both had severe mobility problems. Don had had a five-vessel bypass surgery also, so he related to me. And uh, he had had two angioplastics. He could not walk his dog without with the help of one of these little electric scooters. And uh, she could barely get out of bed. She was grossly overweight. And one time she couldn't get out of bed, they had to call 911. And they both, by their own admission, were circling the drain. So started in 8 to 19. And they both lost 70 pounds. They both can walk. They can both move around. Now, Ruby has had infantile paralysis when she was a youngster. 
So she's never going to not have a walker, but it had nothing to do with her deteriorated physical condition. It had to do with her infantile paralysis. The next picture is, that's my buddy Steve. And he and I, in... Larry. Uh, Larry, thank you. I got you, thank you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, come on. I'll, give me a break here. Yeah, all right. In case they're watching, Steve and Larry are watching. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so he and I, he wanted to go to Utah with me. or He, wa he wanted me to go with him because I had an RV <laughs> and he didn't. And he wanted to go there. And we had a wonderful time. We went for two weeks. And I said, okay, here's the deal. I'm going to provide the food. He'll get, we, you know, and you, except for breakfast, we each made our own. Actually, I ate his breakfast because he had uh, oatmeal. And so uh, he lost 10 pounds during that uh, week, and I didn't lose any because that's what I normally eat. And we also, the thing I was really proud of is that uh, he is a geolo amateur geologist, so he found a mine that we wanted to explore. And the mine was at 11,000 feet. So we had to park and walk to the mine, and the mi we had to park at uh, 10,003, so we had to climb 700 feet up, and I did it. And I, I, there was a whole group. I was keeping more than keeping up with the group. So I was very proud of that. Uh, what else? This is my friend Esther and Ben, and this is a before and after. They both lost a huge amount of weight. She lost something like 155 total, or 125, whatever she says. She and I become the best of friends because we both started lifestyle on the same day and she was having a party i crashed it and we became best of friends ben's story is interesting to the guys not necessarily to you ladies but he said she has tried every single diet that she could and yo-yo she'd get she'd get on the diet lose a couple pounds and gain it all back and gain more back and so she said i'm going on this diet and somebody gave her, oh, she, had, she was in an airport in Europe, heavy like that, and her knees started to give out on her. She could hardly walk. And so if she didn't walk to the plane, she'd miss it. So she had to walk, and it was in terrible pain. So she got back and said, I can't do this. And so the, she said, went to the doctor, and the doctor said, all right, we can give you knee replacement, but you've got to lose 70 pounds. And she was just, because she had tried, been trying for years. And so she didn't know what to do. A friend gave her a used copy of Dr. McGregor's book. And she, like she, and I have the same attitude. If it, my attitude is if it's worth doing, it's worth doing the wretched excess. She, her attitude is if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. So she did, and she lost the weight. And she doesn't need the knee surgery anymore. And so Ben finally said, well, maybe I'll try it. You know, so she, he said, as soon as we get rid of all the meat in the freezer, I'll try it. Now, she was already on the lifestyle. So he waited until the meat was gone. And then he said he just pretty much ate close to what she eats. She's, she's very strict, as I am. And so the weight just, he said, I never tried to lose weight. It just it melted off. This is my friend Donna. She was here. Right? Was she in this this class? She was last class. She was in the last session. Last yeah, class. She, couldn't, she signed up for this session, but she couldn't come because she had that leg injury. Yeah, she but had she leg injury. Asked, but she lost a whole lot of weight, too. And these are pictures of her uh, losing weight. So uh, these are people that I know that have lost the weight. And this is a book. Uh, Esther's in this book. Uh, there are 36 individual that have personally, a lot of them are doctors, but have personally, by eating this way, have uh, stopped and reversed, or reversed both, chronic fatigue syndrome, type 2 diabetes, migraines, kidney disease, scleroma, obesity, asthma, pain, yada, 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 and goes on. And it, it just helps with a whole lot of things. And they're all, that book is a very inspiring book. I'd recommend it. All right, and these are the pantheon of the people, and Twyla knows all of them. We've talked about them. These are the people that we follow. We had, somebody here is following Thurman, I thought. Didn't I talk to somebody? No, that was, I'm sorry, that was somebody this afternoon. But these are the people to watch. And for the most part, these people do it 
to help. They share their knowledge. Yeah, they sell their books. All right, but you can't, their books are a lot of information in them. All right, so now we're back to cognitive dissonance. Yes, okay, you tell me it works for you, it works for other people you know. Why haven't I heard about this? I haven't heard about this. I didn't, I personally didn't know it when I went uh, seven years ago. How come we haven't heard about it? I don't have an answer for that, but I have some thoughts, like follow the money, okay? Let's look at this slide. This is the funding for these various associations, Bannon, Kraft, Bumblebee, Tyson, uh, KFC, uh, Yoplait, Cargill, uh, on and on, Colorado Beef, Subway. Is that health food? I don't think so. Well, let's see who funds the research for these organizations. Oh, yeah. drug companies. This is the American Diabetes. Um, diabetes can be totally cured in 10 days. I saw it done at the McDougal uh, when I was there for 10 days. Diabetes is not caused by sugar, it's caused by fat. And you quit eating the fat. The body generates more than enough insulin for your, your body. It's just, it cannot be absorbed because the receptors in your cells are clogged with fat. Unclog the fat and it all goes in. So, in fact, you, I tell people never go on this diet without telling your doctor first because you'll end up being over uh, insulin. You'll, you know, you'll end up in trouble. So he has to adjust it. And oh, let, this is the Heart Association. Same thing. It's all it's all drug people. Drugs are easy. So. Why doesn't the government protect us? Well, let's look at the advisory. Who are they connected with? Again, all the people. So I'm just suggesting. I don't know that to happen. All right, do we have any questions? I wanted to make a comment. Sure. I understand the question that this is talking to you. For my health and just mental, spiritual deepening, I had to learn how to give up booze. I'm sorry, give up booze? Okay. Same thing. I mean, I can't do that. I'm not going to have any fun with my friends. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And I see them on social media having a great time, you know. Yeah. But then I, I, but I had to change the mind. The mind was the one that was keeping me in that perpetual cycle of thinking this is fun and then this is great and then I. Uh, yes. It's just changing that mind. Yes, but excellent. And I think Dr. Lyle addressed that. Uh, they, well. Yes, it's all, one of the things about this diet you learn is that people, somebody here was talking about salt, how hard it is for salt. Your taste buds change. And I can remember going to McDougal's class, uh, and I had been on the lifestyle for 11 months, and they gave me a bowl of, uh, chocolate pudding. Oh my God, I couldn't finish. It was just full of sugar because, you know, he was transitioning the people into the lifestyle. And I, I had already been there. So it was terrible. And you still, you'll get that uh, when you go out to eat or you'll inadvertently munch on something. It's so salty. You know, you, you get used to not having salt. And about well, it, it varies from six to eight weeks or sometimes even longer. Any any other questions? Any questions? Yes. Can, can, can you wait just a minute? Can I have your uh, thing back? I'm going to give it to her, a microphone. Do you want I, me to go around with the microphone? Would you mind? I would be happy to. <laughs> I want to encourage you all to ask questions. Okay. This is the part of it I love. I should talk to the microphone? Yeah. Okay, I can do that because my lovely wife is here and she does, she's a gourmet cook. Um, we start off, okay, let me, yes, this is the average day. I've sort of, I'm trying, like everything you do in life, you change it and modify it. But normally I have a bowl of, do I not have that on here? I had that another one. Let's see what, uh, a bowl of oatmeal. 
Now, what do I eat? I'm oh, glad you asked. Yes. <laughs> I had it prepared. Who would know? Okay, for, you start off with evening meals and you batch cook. We learned this from Tammy uh, of Nutbag, Nutbag Notebook. And you'd cook whatever you like to eat normally. For instance, one of our favorites was spaghetti and uh, chili. Dottie made some killer chili. I mean, it's really good. So she leaves off the meat and she makes sure there's no oil in it. So that's, in, but you make a lot of it. And you eat your portions, you put it in the fridge, label it. The, I, we put the date on it so we, you know, it doesn't get stale. You know, I've got to tell you, non-animal product food lasts a lot longer in the refrigerator. Um, and, and stir fry is another favorite one we like. Pea or lentil soup instead of uh, 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 pork in pea soup. Uh, uh, you put in a little, t I, I use carrots because, you know, the same color and shape, better or not, spaghetti and pasta. I said that. And that's what you eat for dinner. Then comes, come on, come on. There we go. Then have breakfast. And here it is. I used a cup of oat groats, uh, a sliced banana, <laughs> not, not a, it's a kick out of this, nine blackberries. Nine raspberries, and I go wild with the blueberries. I just sprinkle them on there. And that way you get a lot of berries in your diet. And uh, I, I've now switched to oatmeal because I was eating the groats cold. But the groats are nice because they're whole food. Uh, and they, it takes longer to digest them. So your, the insulin level doesn't go as high. And it's spread out longer because it takes longer to digest them. Um, Oat groats are the, what the horses eat, and they look like little rice. And so if you cut that groat twice, that becomes steel-cut oatmeal. And that's pretty good, too. I mean, it's because it's less processed, and it takes longer to digest. It takes longer to cook, which is why people don't eat it as much. And then the last one is rolled oats, which we call oatmeal. And that gets digested easier. But... I like it. It's heated, and I sometimes eat the, the steel cut, too. You know, you got to get a little variety. I, for five or six years, I eat the oat groats cold. Um, next slide. Oh, that's just the recipe for it. For lunch, remember we batch cook. So now we have all of that food in the refrigerator. What do I want for lunch? The first day, you're, only, you're not going to have much of a choice, but at, at halfway into the week, you say, oh, I can have this and that. And that's why I date it. I always eat the oldest first. So um, just, you know, if you look at food as a fuel rather than as entertainment, you'll do much better on this lifestyle. Uh, what, did I, what did I put up next? Oh, yeah, these are some tips. These are... Um, you can, if you can, uh, this is no salt added. So if you can get no salt um, canned food, it's hard. And you sometimes you pay, which I never understand. They take the salt out and charge you more, uh, or they don't put the salt in really, and they charge you more. Okay, um, come on. There we go. This you were somebody was talking about this in this. Yeah, 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 and he um, he was at Whole Food for the longest time. They had some sort of a falling out, but his products are very good. His father was uh, Dr. Eshelson, so you can rely on his food. This is one of my favorite tricks. Put a couple uh, pieces of lettuce down, put a little uh, um, cherry tomatoes on it, cut them up, and then pour this on cold. It's frozen, but you pour it on cold, and it's still in a, in a uh, balsamic vinegar. It's just a great dressing. If you can't read it, but it's all it has, no anything foreign in it. Super sweet corn. Yeah, yeah. Sweet corn, black beans, green peppers, red bell peppers, and uh, onions. That's all it's in it. So it's healthy, and that's the key to all, this whole thing. And now, how about some real questions? Actually, the reason I put it this way is usually I, I have somebody in the audience that feeds me. I said, I want you to, you know, I have somebody. And you, yeah, I know. That's all right. That's all right. Um, how about some real questions? That's good. Come on. There you go. Uh, pasta. Are you doing a whole wheat pasta? 
you should. Can you get her the mic? Well, you, you, she's talking loud. Okay. Yeah, I try to eat whole wheat pasta because it, it's it, yeah, it's just better for you. You get uh, less uh, whatever the thing is that builds up. I mean, it digests it easier, and you want whole as much whole foods as you can get. Uh, Dr. Greger and um, I hope everybody here knows about uh, Dr. Greger NutritionFacts.org, and he talks about that a lot. You want it to be as close to nature as you can get it. But pasta is good for you. It's the bad things that people put on it. Butter and meat. Oh, that'd be good. We tried with chickpea and he didn't like it. <laughs> Encourage them, honey. Don't discourage them. <laughs> well, everybody's taste different. I, hers and mine couldn't be more farther apart. You know, she doesn't like hardly anything I eat. But no, I, I eat healthy, but eat she does. Extremely. Well, we were talking about that early. You, I can't. I feel like I can't afford to cheat. Is so. that in your marriage or is both? <laughs> She'll kill me or the food will. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> People used to ask me that in my class. They said, well, can we ever cheat? I go, how many sausages you can cheat on your wife and see how that goes? Yeah. <laughs> can I ask a couple of questions? No. I know. <laughs> of course you can. It's your class. So I would like to know, before you went on this diet, this lifestyle, had you ever heard of vegans or plant-based and what was your opinion of um, had I ever heard of vegan and plant-based? Vegan or plant-based. I had heard of vegan, and I thought they were weird. Yes. Um, and uh, who? somebody was talking about that. I mean, uh, even now, I still think some of them are. <laughs> well, come on. They say, don't eat honey. Well, honey comes from animals it comes from plants the, the the bees just manufacture oh no but you're oppressing the bees all right you, you know i so no i had never really heard about plant-based that's why i say when the lady came out and introduced it i thought oh okay so and i really thought and you were at the conference i really thought that they named the food plant-based just to get away from the uh, the be vegan uh, name but that, I don't think that's true. The, the original vegetarians were vegans. They would not eat any animal products. And so uh, it's, you know, and the other problem is the only animal I really care about is this one. But as you learn why you, sh uh, many reasons for not eating milk. No, no, it's obviously unhealthy, but if you learn how it's produced, you think, oh my goodness, you, you really, you can't unlearn all the things you I've seen in seven years. So, I have, I do care about the animals. I know I kid about it, but go ahead. So, was your wife always on board with your lifestyle? Oh my goodness! There's a sore subject. <laughs> she no. As a quick answer, is that I started this on my own, and um, we had these conversations conversations in the car. I can remember one distinctly. She says, I don't believe what you believe. And I'm going, it's not a belief. This is fact-based. And so it took a while. May I tell part of your story? Sure. Okay. She had um, liver cancer in 2015. It was a tough year for Dottie. Her, she lost her son. She had liver cancer and, and she had a stroke. And the stroke was very severe. Uh, and she went and took her um, 11 weeks to uh, therapy. And now, you can't tell now. And then she, uh, she got the cancer. And she had um, two thirds of her liver removed. And that was good for a while. And she didn't have chemo. And then about two years later, I believe, three years, thank you. Um, pardon? It metastasized. It came back in her lungs. Mm 
So now that meant she had stage four cancer. Well, she will tell you she was always eating healthy, but I think her in, she had <laughs> she had some skin in the game now. So I think she was a little more paid a little more attention to what I was doing and what I told her. Uh, so she went on that, and that was in uh, eighteen. Yeah, that's three years after fifteen, and uh, they it was a small a small thing about the size of your fingertip, and they did uh, radiation therapy, and it got smaller. And then she would go in every three months for a full body scan, and every three months it would get smaller and smaller and smaller until finally she, she doesn't have any evidence of it, and they've said, well, you don't have to come in every three months now. We, we think you come in. I don't know what you're doing if you're doing it right. And I had told him I was plant-based. He said, oh, that doesn't matter. And didn't, you, doesn't didn't you ask him? Huh? Didn't you ask him if it helped, the plant-based? Yeah, he said no. Yeah, he said no. So, yeah. that, it, it, and I was, <laughs> we were in what's uh, commonly called a mixed marriage. <laughs> and there's a lot of, a lot of them out there. And it was not my silver tongue that talked her into it. No, because she didn't have the silver tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever crave any foods at all? Um, yes. Um, every once in a while, I will crave something salty, really salty. Uh, and I try really hard not to give in to that. But n no other foods. I like people say, Somebody, when I first went on this lifestyle, say, well, do you, what do you miss? Or, and I say, well, Dottie used to make really good salmon, and I used to love salmon. I said, well, I sort of missed that, but I didn't miss it that bad. I don't even, I can't even think of eating salmon now. Uh, but not, not enough to be annoying, you know. I mean, I, I don't, I can pass pretzels up at a, in the store and smell them and all. Yeah, that's fine. But just every once in a while, and I, tr I try to I substitute. I had a hard time with sweets, a really hard time, and with chocolate. Uh, I got over chocolate with Dr. Greger's Healthy Shakes. He has a, if you go on his website and look at Healthy Shakes, you'll find one. And that got me over that. I don't, yeah, that's fine. But um, sweets are very hard. I, my father, a, every meal, he had uh, st uh, meat. And he had a dessert, not breakfast, but every lunch and dinner, he had to have a dessert. And so I, the longest time I had to have something sweet after, I still do, dessert. In fact, tonight I had a wrap, and for dessert I had three figs, or two figs. So they're sweet. So I've substituted the sweetness of fruit for any sort of a sugar. Well, just about time to wrap up. Okay. I'd like to ask if you had to tell someone three things, just three, three things, what are three rapid pieces of advice that you would give them to if, become plant-based? Okay, the first is you don't need willpower. You just have to make a decision. And once you decide, do you want to live or don't you? That's the basic decision. If you want to live, you go on this lifestyle. That's that simple. From then on, every decision you make will go up to that one. So you get down to what you eat, what you do, anything during the day. I mean, it works not just with food, it works with exercise. And you say, I'm tired, I don't want an exercise. Do you want to live? Okay, do it. You know, and you come to between, do you want to have this um, healthy salad or do you want to eat uh, some uh, fries smothered in yak fat? I want the healthy salad. It's not a decision. You've already made that decision up there. You're merely implementing the decision you made whenever you made it. I made it in 2016. Uh, that was the first, well, it's three things. Uh, I know I had three when I started this. Um, that's the main one. The second one is surround yourself with whole food, plant-based people. I know what the third one is. Surround yourself with those. And the third thing is learn as much as you can. The more you learn, the easier it's going to become because you've already made the decision. You want to live. So you learn, you read in this 
uh, Dr. Gregor's, uh, watch the videos if you're lazy like I am, and you learn that this food is good. Blueberries are good. Oh, you eat a lot of blueberries. You learn that this is good. You eat that. You learn that this is bad. You don't do it. So those are the three things that I would uh, summarize. And then just to close, that's a lot of people have said, oh man, this whole food is not based by anything. I don't have enough time for that. So I know you have a good quote that I shared with you along the way. Uh, I think you'll have to say it because I, if you don't have time. If you don't make time for your health, you'll be forced to make time for your it, That's right, mm -hmm. yeah. I, okay, so I want to thank you very much. Oh, Okay, protein powders, you know, protein. Where do you take on that? I mean, and okay. as far as protein is concerned, I know you protein, protein is essential, but you get protein in almost every vegetable you eat. And the thing about protein is, protein is what damaged my kidneys, and most human kidneys were not designed to process protein. And the, the body is a beautiful, tremendous design thing. If you eat so many grams of protein, your body will send out an enzyme, and they tested for this, that protects your kidneys. If you eat the same amount of plant protein, the body doesn't send that enzyme out, and it just, it, it, your body uh, goes through it. So you don't have to worry, never take protein supplements, even if they're, um, uh, plant protein. You, get the, you don't need any protein, any supplements except vitamin B12. You just don't need any. Uh, the other part of your question was. A friend of mine brought up Beyond Burgers. Oh, yes, Beyond Burgers. Those are a, a, what the plant based community does is they consider those transitional foods. But I never, I didn't transit. You, if you make the decision up here to eat healthy, you won't eat those because they have as much fat and the much bad fat is regular hamburgers. They don't have the animal protein, admittedly, but they're not healthy by any shot of the imagination. Yes, they're healthy compared to a regular hamburger. So uh, my personal opinion is avoid them. One burger though that I sent to you. You did. And I liked it, his philosophy. But that's she well. said that she said um, the animal the she said Beyond Burgers. Beyond Burgers, yes. And this one is called Actual Veggies. And he the uh, the guy who manufactured them, he says he's not plant based, he's plant only. So that's all that's in the burger. Yes. And you can make a burger um, several people on the internet, you can get on, and they'll make them out of beans and the whole thing. But think about it for a minute. When you eat, a, at least when I eat a burger, I put the burger on the bun, whole wheat bun, and then I put lettuce and onion and tomatoes and all the garden on top of it. I never taste the darn burger. It's just the delivery vegetable for all the vegetables that I put on it. We do that with carrot dogs because carrot. Oh dogs, yes. Look a lot. Oh. So by the time you put them in the sauce and put them in the bun or whatever. Then load them up with chili and mustard and all this. It still has the same rubbery taste or the ball, or the consistency, the texture. Yes, is like a ballpark. They do or something, but obviously it's much healthier for you. And if it looks close enough to the thing that you're trying to yeah. imitate, then it kind of sets the trigger in your mind that it'll probably taste like. Yeah, that. but you have that's a road you have to be careful of. Not hot uh, those, but in general, if you try to emulate what you've eaten before. My theory is you're going to go astray easier if you just embrace and say, let me try something new. Uh, now, Dottie makes uh, a thing. They call it jambalaya, and you made it the other night. It was delicious, but it didn't look like jambalaya. It was, but it was a nice vegetable stew mix thing. Like sliced vegetables. Yeah, Basically. it was very good. I think I was thinking more along the lines, because I cook for a lot of people, and not all of them are vegan or plant-based. They think if it looks enough like lasagna. Okay. Oh, she makes good lasagna. Yeah. It will taste good to them. But if I said, oh, this is vegan, it's like, oh, no, I don't know what it tastes Yes. So that's what I'm kind of Yes. Saying. No, that's, yeah, we fool a lot of our friends that way. Okay. Well, thank you, Al. This has been great. Are there any more questions? Otherwise, yeah, thank you so much. <clears throat> you want me to stop the video?
Oh, I'll do it. I forgot. Thank you. So I just wanted to remind you that next week is our last.